my name is uh, Jose Cavalieri. I'm a lead consultant architect for ITQ. And I have today here with me my colleague. Hello, Jose. My name is uh, Michael. I'm an automation architect at ITQ. And today we're going to talk about how you can get started with a V-Suite with Tanzu or Tanzu Kubernetes Grid proof of concept uh, in your environment or at your customer's environment, for example, using a load balancing solution called NSX ALB. So, Jose, we draw uh, a few components on the board. How or where, why do we need them? All right, so remember a couple of things before we start, Mikael. This is a continuation of the previous light board. So that one is a prerequisite for this one. So if you didn't have ch time to check, please go back for a minute, check our first light board about the KGS and the KGM, and then you can come to this one. So Mikael, before we start from these three little networks, mm -hmm. I would like to ask you why do we need a load balancer solution. Uh, yes. So regardless of which Tanzu Kubernetes Grid flavor you choose, vSphere with Tanzu or Tanzu Kubernetes Grid uh, multi-cloud, you always need a load balancing solution. Why? Well, because um, we want to have a load balanced IP address for our Kubernetes API endpoints. So our Kubernetes clusters, they expose a Kubernetes API endpoint so that we can kubectl or kubectl into our clusters and deploy our applications. So our load balancing solution will deploy the load balanced IP addresses for the Kubernetes API endpoints. And of course, you will be hosting applications on your Kubernetes clusters. So you might also want to expose those applications externally. And that's also where the load balancing solution comes into place. All right. So bear with us for a few minutes and then you're going to understand the overall solution right now. So let's start from the beginning. We would like to start from the first network, what we called management network, okay? Management network is a very important uh, network for the Tanzu solutions, right? Mikael, what does it host in the management network? Well, on the regardless of the uh, Tanzu Kubernetes Grid edition you choose, so vSphere with Tanzu or TKG or Tanzu Kubernetes Grid, you will find your management cluster here. Yeah, This is actually your management Kubernetes cluster. And you will use that management Kubernetes cluster as kind of an interface to deploy your baby Kubernetes clusters or your additional tons of Kubernetes clusters where your applications will be hosted on. So it's important to know that you will not be hosting applications in your management cluster. You will host applications later on in the tons of Kubernetes clusters. As a load balancing solution, we have chosen here NSX Advanced Load Balancer or NSX ALB. Yeah. Uh, of course, we would like to have an option to manage and configure our NSX ALB solution. That happens actually with the NSX ALB controller. And you can your, deploy your NSX ALB controller with only one NSX ALB controller. But for production scenarios, we advise to always deploy it in a highly available manner. Uh, deploy three NSX ALB controllers. Also, maybe good to know is that the NSX ALB solution is API based. So for automation geeks as us, uh, we can automate a lot uh, with or out of uh, NSX ALB. And you will use the controllers to manage and configure your NSX ALB solution using the web UI or the API or the CLI. It's really the brain of your NSX ALB environment. Okay, what's the ne next network, uh, Jose? All right, the next network is something that we called workload network. So one thing that we mentioned during the first light board was that you can have multiple networks or multiple segments in order to increase the security or maybe in case of doing a moot tenant environment. So in that case, here would be one of the first options that you can have multiple networks to host your workload scenario. So Mikael, what does it mean for Tanzu? Well, what do we host in the network for workloads? Yes, indeed. So remember, eh, when you use your management cluster to create a new baby Kubernetes cluster, you will actually create a Tanzu Kubernetes cluster or TKC in short. And this will be hosted in the workload network. And remember, we're just talking about, in this case, a vSphere environment. So your Tanzu Kubernetes cluster nodes are just virtual machines. And those virtual machines will get an IP address from your workload network. And as Jose mentioned, you have the option to deploy different Tanzu Kubernetes clusters into one workload network or into multiple 
uh, workload networks. So this is actually the Tanzu Kumeris cluster that will host your application. So let's say we have a web application and just another uh, app one application with some pods below uh, hosting or providing those applications. So these applications will be running in your Tanzu Kubernetes clusters and not in your management cluster. If we look briefly at the NSX ALB solution, we now know how we can manage and configure it, but which component is responsible for hosting the load balanced IP addresses? Well, that's something that is called the service engines or SE for short. Those are basically also just virtual machines that are being spin up in your vSphere environment, for example, and they will host your load balanced IP addresses. But more on that later. Uh, maybe Jose, what's the last network uh, that we are talking about? All right. So remember that we are focusing here on a POC for your organization, right? So we are always talking about the minimum, but also including a little bit best practice from ITQ and from VMware. So the third network in that case would be something that we called data network or also very known network mm -hmm. uh, or also very known as a, a VIP network. So, as you can imagine by the name, it's going to host our, our VIPs, right? So, Mikael, can you explain what yes. type of the VIPs are we going to be hosting on the VIP yeah, network? Yeah. So, in the beginning of uh, the video, we explained a bit how we need a load balancer for the Kubernetes API endpoint. So, in the VIP network, you will find your Kubernetes API endpoint for the management cluster. So, that guy. Yeah. And you will find the Kubernetes API endpoint for all your tons of Kubernetes clusters in the VIP network. Well, how actually does NSX ALB do this? Well, your service engines are by default with one leg connected to the management network. So one network interface on your service engine virtual machine is connected to the network port group in vSphere, for example. And an other network interface is connected to the VIP network because the service engine will be the virtual machine that's actually hosting your load balanced IP address. And of course, your load balanced IP address needs to be routed or needs to go to a backend. In our case, the backend is residing in our workload network. Let's say here our Tanzu Kubernetes cluster API endpoint that needs to be load balanced through our Tanzu Kubernetes cluster nodes. How can that happen? Well, you actually have uh, two options, I would say. Uh, ideally, or the first option is that you can route to your backend uh, network, to your workload network, or you could also um, directly connect your service engines to the workload network. So what does this mean now? Well, let's say you want to expose the web application. You create a service of type load balancer on your Tanzu Kubernetes cluster and your NSX ALB environment will pick up that request and will have the web VIP in the VIP network. So your load balanced IP address for your web application. The same is true for app one. For example, I create a load balance or a service of type load balancer and I will have my application VIP address in the VIP network. So I think we almost covered every component to say, are we missing uh, something? Yeah, so a brief overview, we mm -hmm. have three or more networks. Huh? As remember, we can do uh, multiple networks for segmentation and security. We have management clusters and TKCs, which will host your pods and your applications. We have a VIP segment which is going to host not only the management and clusters, but also the VIPs for your applications. And this can be multiple VIPs, of course. We have the service engines that are responsible for the load balancers uh, hosting and some communication like Mikhail explained. So in that case, I believe we are done with the solution. Mm -hmm. Almost, right? <laughs> ah, yes, yes, you're right. Yeah. Um, I forgot to mention. Yeah. So how this communicates with our NSX ALB. Yeah, indeed. So how does a Tanzu Kubernetes Grid flavor or addition communicate with NSX ALB? Eh? How does NSX ALB know which kind of load balancer it needs to create? Well, that happens with something called the ACO pod, the AV Kubernetes operator. There will be an ACO, for example, in every Kubernetes cluster. And whenever you create a service of type load balancer or for example, ingress, um, the ACOPOT monitors or listens for requests like that on your Kubernetes clusters. And the ACO will translate that request to an NSX ALB API call to your NSX ALB controller. And then the controller just instructs your service engines 
to deploy a load balanced IP address. So yes, it's possible to use NSX ALB for layer 4 load balancing, but also for layer 7 ingress. Okay, right. so almost finished. Now we, yes. I think <laughs> now we are done. Yeah. So I would like yeah. to uh, highlight that ITQ is here to support our partners and to support our customers. In case you would like to have some ideas how to proceed with POCs for Tenzo solutions. And then... That's it, I guess. So uh, thank you for watching. Uh, I hope to see you on the next video and make sure to like and subscribe to our uh, channel. Bye. Thank you. See you next time.